again, we've got a couple of experimental features coming, perhaps coming to a uh, future download. Um, we've already released Candy Edge Detection and a few other things. Uh, but we got a couple more cooking right now, and one of them is a uh, selector tool, a color selector tool. Um, and we have some chroma keying tools that already exist, uh, but the limitation of those is you can only select one color and use a fuzzy value. Uh, it could be in different channels like hue, saturation, value, red, green, blue, that kind of thing. But uh, in some cases, in a lot of cases, you want to use more than one color. Um, because there can be variations, maybe in hue or variations in uh, uh, tone or something, like in this case. Let me go ahead and select a color here. You see we're doing pretty good with our fuzzy value, uh, getting all that white area, all that green area keyed out. But we have some spill into this bluish green color, so we have to reduce that fuzzy value until uh, we can no, no longer spill into that bluish tone there. But now we have another problem, is that we're not uh, pick, picking up that entire, we're not keying out that entire green area. Uh, there's some areas that are keying uh, better than others. So what we're going to do is just select a range of these green tones here, and I'll just drag across here. You can see them being added across the bottom. And you can see just by doing that now, we have a much better um, coverage of the areas that we want selected just a few little fuzzy areas here a few little uh not quite perfect areas here we can actually select in that spot right under there and do a little better right there now we're getting a little into the fuzzy again so we'll just take that down a little bit more and we see now there's a little bit of spill here we'll take that out and you can see on our color wheels the areas that are selected uh, you can see it's not just a single color, but there's an entire range of uh, the color color spectrum that is being selected. Uh, you can see it there. You can't really see it on the, uh, the saturation because we're not really selecting a wide range of saturation, but we are selecting a fairly wide range of value and also hue. So that is, I might take this fuzzy down just a little bit more. Right there. And that is doing pretty good. There are some JPEG artifacts in there that um, could use some other kind of filtering to get rid of those, like a minimize or a maximize or a medium filter or something to uh, remove those. But anyways, that is one tool that we are currently working on. It's not really perfected yet. We haven't fully decided where we want to go with that, but there you go. And another one is a script we have here, which is... Uh, artificial green or something to that effect let's see all screen right there and it will just let us combine the uh, blue and red channels in different ways to get a false green channel and there are a couple ways you can go with that but you can see it entirely re uh, entirely removes the green uh, even in these uh, the green spill that was on the face there is gone now too uh, but it has somewhat altered the colors of our other um, objects on here such as these red areas are now yellow and these blue areas are now kind of really blue green uh, we could use a different combined mode and these are now more blue and these are more red uh, neither is really perfect uh, there's also a uh, average which i think does a little better job uh, for this particular image and you can see it still completely removed that green spill we had there and it looks a little more natural than what we had before uh, but that by itself is probably not enough. So what we really want to do is use uh, that in com combination with this uh, mask we just created. Uh, I think I'll copy this to the swap image. It's like working on the uh, the back of the paper. And I will just remove some of these uh, markers since we don't really need those <laughs> for anything in this particular case. And I can just do that with the rectangle tool. I said we could filter these oddities out. Maybe a medium filter would do a good job. Um, combine. Now let's uh, so it can evolve and adjustable median and just do that a little bit. 
Um, I might want to maximize or blur this a little bit first and then maximize it. Try a couple of simple burrs on there. Maybe two in a row would be enough. And I will filter. Um, let's see, under Convolve and Adjustable Maximum. And we can just do this as much as we want, but we want to just keep it to a small amount, so one or two. Maybe that, something like that. Uh, some other things we could do with that, maybe like a, a light diffusion. Gonna make this precise, just make it look a little nicer in this case. Uh, you can adjust the level you want that to be, that kind of thing. Hit OK, and now I will swap back. Oh, one more thing. We noticed this little bit of green spill here. All I have to do is remove that with the rectangle tool. Let's see. Need not too sure what's going on. I think my caps lock is on or something. I don't know. Anyways, um, so I will go back here, and there's an option under image to, uh, under, I think, alpha to copy swap image to selection. That becomes our new selection, and now we can go to that script that we had before, and maybe, let's see, script, and go to uh, full screen. Select the combine mode and there you go that is uh getting rid of our green uh while protecting uh the rest of this image um by using the alpha channel although you might want to use that without the alpha channel to get rid of the screen spill it's up to you how you want to implement that uh you could just as easily uh combine that with some other background i'll just put in a uh, checkerboard or something to that effect hit ok and there you go uh, some basic compositing techniques using scripts and some plugins that we are uh, not quite ready to release but coming soon um, a few other things we can uh, show at this point let me clear the selection and bring in a new image here uh, say I want to remove a feature uh, we can do this with Poisson blending, and we would then select a uh, texture that we want to replace that with, or replace, you know, uh, replace the raccoon with a uh, some kind of texture that would uh, uh, be color blended into this existing area. But in some cases, we just want to remove that uh, for various types of uh, projects you might be working on. Uh, if you just want to remove the object without replacing the actual texture in there. Uh, we do have a feature that does that, but the quality is not exactly the greatest. It just kind of has a directional blending quality. If you go to uh, Image and Fill and Feature Replacement, there's Feature Removal Fill, but again, it's just not that impressive. It's kind of bandy and not very nice. So what we have now is uh, Remove Fill. And it just goes in and does it. And you can see it's not bandy or anything. And that can be useful for certain things. If you're doing some kind of experiment, you want to you want to paint your own details in or whatever. Uh, but you want to get, get rid of what's already in there. That will do the job. So those are just a few things we're working on uh, coming later. Uh, thanks for watching and talk to you later.